previously on the Art of Boat Building. So what is a water line? In simple terms, it's where the surface of the water meets the hull of the boat. One is the designed water line, the painted water line, and the bootstrap. Now that we have those dimensions established for the stem and the stern, we can now lay them out. So my preferred method I'm going to use is using a string and batten. Now that I've got the uh, starboard side done, I'll do the very same thing over on the port side. In the meantime, uh, I need to move quite a bit of material and some machinery in order to make my batten boards fit all the way over. So I was looking at all those materials that it needed to be moved in order to set up the batten boards over on the port side. I thought to myself, there's just got to be an easier way. And I discovered that over here in my measuring drawer, a tailor's tape. Now that we have all of the water lines scribed in, the next thing to do is to paint the cotton seams. So let's check out and see what Greg Russell says about that in his book, Building Small Boats. After the seams have been caulked, brush paint into the seams to stabilize the cotton, keep it from puffing back out, and isolate it from moisture. He goes on to say then that while any oil-based paint works, genuine red lead likely to offer more preservative value than any other. The problem with that is you simply cannot get red lead primer anymore. So as an alternative, we're going to use a really good quality oil-based anti-fouling paint. So the paint that I'm going to use is this Total Boat Krypton. And the reason is that it's a really good anti-fouling paint. And that's really important to use below the waterline. I was going to use a regular primer for above the water line, and then it occurred to me, why not just use the anti-fouling on the whole thing? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin this about 10%, what it recommends on the back of the can, so that it will absorb into that cotton really well. The first thing I like to do is to punch a few holes here in the rim so that when you do get paint on there, it goes back into the can. It's really important to get it stirred up really well. Make sure all the solids are off the bottom. This is a pretty fresh can, so I don't feel anything lumpy down there. And we'll get this stirred up. I 
That looks pretty good. So I am going to put on some gloves here because notoriously I would make a mess if I start pouring this out. Now earlier I had um, put some thinner in a small cup there and I put in one ounce. So since I need to thin it 10%, I'm going to use 10 ounces of the paint and then the one ounce of the thinner. I really like these uh, total boat cups that you get when you, they send them free when you order material from them. And I like all these markings that are on it. Uh, works out really well. So I need to see here where the 10 ounce is. So you can see we have uh, 10 ounces of paint and we're going to add one ounce of thinner and give that a stir. And we'll be ready to start priming some of the cotton. things about getting loading your paintbrush up is I'm just dipping about oh half inch three-eighths of an inch of paint in there and then I'm tapping it on the side as opposed to a lot of people when they're painting they'll wipe the brush on here and what you end up doing is taking all of the paint out of your brush so by just putting the tip in and then tapping it on the sides it loads your brush just the right amount so that you'll have too much paint or too little of paint.
All right, we've got all the seams painted now. Uh, we'll let that dry overnight, and then in the morning, we'll start working on the uh, seam compound. Well, now that all of the seams have dried, I have taken this opportunity to go over the entire hole and really inspect it for any little spots that might need some fairing compound. For the most part, they were just spots where there had been little pinholes from batten boards and such. So the other thing is that it, it gives me the opportunity to really make sure that the hull is nice and fair. So now that we have that done, we can now refer to Greg Russell's book again. And the next step is what's called paying the seams. Paying the seams. Tune up the surface of the hull one last time with a plane or a longboard, which we just did. Then he goes on to say, seam compound provides an initial barrier against leaks, helps keep the water from worrying the cotton, and prolongs the seams with a nice uniform appearance after painting. The compound also keeps the seams clear of paint that can harden and impede the swelling of the plank. He goes on to say to keep in mind that seam compound, though being flexible, is also an adhesive and that it'll really stick tenaciously to the plank. So he suggests that it's a good idea to tape the seams so it'll be easier clean up later. So that's what we're gonna do next, is to tape the seams. Now that I have all of the seams taped, I can move on to putting in the seam compound. Now, for those of you that are wondering, I used about three and a half rolls of tape, and it took me about an hour and a half. So what this next process is called is paying the seams, or to pay a seam. And that is simply putting a flexible compound in the seam. Now, in the old days, what they used to use was uh, linseed oil putty mixed with red lead. And unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, um, you can't get red lead anymore uh, because it's a hazardous material. So I'm opting for a more modern approach that comes off the shelf in a can. So the seam compound that I'm going to use is made by Interlux. And it comes in two different types. One is white, and the white is for above the water line, and the brown, or some people call it red, is for below the water line. So the brown is here, and here's the white. Now they're really two completely different uh, beasts. Uh, you can see how the white is really very, very smooth texture to it. Uh, in fact, it was really most all of the dissolates 
had floated to the top uh, in this can when I first opened it up. And as opposed to the brown, which is actually very stiff, as you can see, and the opposite was true with that, is most of the distillates had floated to the bottom. So what I did was I took my uh, drill and I put a piece of wire, beat both of these up and stir them really, really well. Both of these systems work on the same principle in that there's a binder so that they stick to the seam, but they remain flexible on the inside. Uh, brown will actually set up pretty quickly. You can see here on this palette that I was using yesterday when I was actually doing the starboard side, and you can see that it's really dried pretty, pretty well. In fact, I have to uh, scrape on that. So that's less than 24 hours, where the white, as it's been sitting the same length of time, you can see it's still very, very flexible. Uh, it does have a little bit of skin, like over here. I don't really pick it up on my finger, uh, as opposed to the fresh. What I need to do is to apply both of these in the joints uh, with a putty knife, and then to strike off that joint. Now, Greg Russell suggested one of the best tools for that is actually a spoon. And the reason for that is you want a little bit of a concave surface in that joint so that when those planks do expand that that doesn't protrude out, that you get more of a flush feeling. So the nice thing about a spoon is it's very easy to follow the joint and also you can move your finger around to get the pressure where you want it. So let me show you how these go in the boat. I mentioned earlier that I had done the starboard side yesterday and in doing so I learned that the white compound uh, went into the seam really easily. And you can see here that it was, because of its soft, pliable nature, it went in really easily. Uh, and it's also really easily to tool it off with that spoon. But I did discover that the brown was a little harder to get in there because of its stiffness. So what I learned to do was to warm up the brown. So how I did that was I simply took a heating pad and put it over the can like so and then put a box over the top of it to sort of hold it on there. Um, so by doing that then the brown stayed really nice and pliable. So to do this, I only take about a teaspoon or so. That way it doesn't cool down too much. Now once I've got some putty on my palette here, it's a pretty straightforward process of taking a flexible putty knife and working that into the seam. And the important thing here is to really get it worked down into the bottom of the seam. And just move on a few inches at a time. You can see how with this warmed up a little bit, it goes into that seam really nicely. Now one of the things that I discovered with the brown seam compound that tooling it with the spoon was a little difficult that it got a little tear out. So what I discovered was if I took a rag that I've saturated in some paint thinner and then I've kept it in this other container so that it wouldn't bleed around if I take a rag with a paint thinner on it and just go over it very lightly, it cleans that up really nice and it also puts just a little bit of a concave surface in there.
one debate I had with myself was to where to start and stop brown sealant and the white sealant. Um, so what I decided was that I would stop right in the middle of the boot stripe. The um, brown sealant is really designed to be in water constantly and the white is not. So what, I, what my reasoning is, is that when the boat is on a mooring, there's definitely some water will be splashing up at least to the boot stripe. So I needed a landmark, so I've decided that I would stop the underwater sealant right at the center of the boot strap before I did the above water sealant. I want to thank all of the new subscribers that have subscribed recently. Uh, I really appreciate a lot of your comments of support. I also want to thank all of the patrons. It is with your support that I'm able to take the time to film and edit these videos. So now let's take a look at the front and pull off a little bit of tape and see how it looks. It's been 48 hours or more since I've put this seam compound in here. And you can see that it's really pretty dry. It doesn't come off on my hand at all. Uh, one of the things that I had read is that some of the complaints was that this seam compound, the white, never set up. And that's just a case of not waiting long enough. Uh, it does skin over, and as you can see, in 48 hours it's skinned over very well. Also, it's actually been pretty cool here. Uh, it's gotten down well into the 40s overnight. So uh, it, anyway, I'm pretty happy with the way that's come out. So let's take a look and see how it looks with some of the tape pulled off of it. So we're not gonna see a big difference here because remember, these seams are painted with primer. So the primer is what we see here that's white but I can tell you on close inspection that those seams look really good. Let's take a look at, see what it looks like up here. So it looks pretty good on really happy with the way that looks. So the one of the things is you definitely do not have to tape it. Uh, I elected to because I think it makes a little neater job. Uh, here are some images from the landing school where they did not tape it and they just followed it with the paint thinner that I had mentioned earlier. And you can see that it really sort of stains the planks. So I'm pretty happy with the fact that the way it came out with the tape, uh, I think it just makes a little bit of a neater job. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. It looks uh, pretty neat and clean. So anyway, uh, pretty happy. The next thing that we're gonna do is to paint the hull. So I'm gonna let the, the uh, seams that I uh, put compound in today set up for several days, maybe even four or five days so that it's nice and uh, secure. And in the meantime, I need to decide what color I'm gonna paint the boat. So as always, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building.